Hey, I am a man with my feet on the ground, nigga. I stand. I'ma face my problems, don't help it hands. I'm just saying that I never ran. Damn. I had the ball in spite of the pain. I was tired of the losses, I wanted a game. I want the whole world to know my name. If I make it out, no, I'm bringing the game. They my brothers, yeah, they know my pain. We don't share them mind, but I love them the same. Gotta stay humble, now I stay in my lane. Never let the money fuck with my brain. Hey, welcome to Dream Tour, the podcast where we take you on a tour of many different types of people's dreams, goals, and aspirations. We have a very special guest today. We are actually, the first time we are out of town, we are in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania today. And um, we have a very special guest. Go ahead and introduce yourself. What's up? So I'm Bonnie, and I am not originally from Philly. I'm from D.C., but he was able to come see me today. I am an entrepreneur, and I'm also an artist, so we'll be getting into yeah, the nitty-gritty. <laughs> I um I was listening to Paralyzed just just a couple of days ago. Your that's your latest your latest yeah. release, right? How do you like it? I I like that one a lot. It's just like it's um, what's the word for it? It's kind of like an MTV old alternative rock vibe. Yeah, right? it's it's like rock, but like also like it's got a like nice like a really nice like vibiness to it all Thank as you. well. Thank so you. like. I just remember, like you know, checking it out on Instagram and like, but even pre-release, I was like, "Oh, this is gonna be good. I can't. I'm gonna have to give Thank you some streams." You, yeah. And I'm not even like privy to doing rock music, but that was my first rock. Your first style. First rock. Yeah. All right. What do you usually mess with? I do a lot of rap and R and B, but lately, uh, my vibe has just been drawn to that side of music. And yeah, I even um, just even in my music taste, I don't I don't create any type of music, but my music taste over this past. Um, probably years transferred from like you know um just straight rap to um even like uh like more like even to from to melodic rap and then to like rock. um some rock a little bit of like you know i love my juice world i love my <laughs> i love my, i love my um little peep little peep yeah i love I just little peep. put mad people on a little peep and sally he's deceased but yeah, songs are just... it seems that all the artists I like, yeah, they just like seem to Suicide go on Suicide Boys and oh. stuff. Wait, like... did, did, oh yeah, wait, Suicide Boys is alive, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. I was about to be like, oh, oh did I miss that? Yeah. They're alive. That's good, that's you good. You love their music too. Bro. Yeah, I've, I've heard a couple of things by them, not too much, yeah. but they're, they're definitely really that good. bracket. That, that rock, mm -hmm. rock rap type of right. combination. Exactly. So, um, where do you draw inspiration from music-wise then? Those, some uh, of those people? Music-wise, I've been in a very versatile family. My family's very diverse, so we grew up listening to Journey, Led Zeppelin, all the way okay. to Aretha Franklin, Whitney, Michael, everybody. So I'm mixed racially and very mixed with the culture and diversity of music, yes. too. I love everything from country, rock, and rap. So. Yeah, that's one of the things, like, one of the reasons I loved Juice Road is the first time I listened through an album by him, it seemed like there was five genres in that right. one album. So versatile. Mm -hmm. And thing. so when you can do something like that, you can make music for everyone. Exactly, and that's my goal with it. Like, I want to reach everybody with yeah. my music. How long have you been making music? It's been about, I want to say five years now. Okay. I mean, solid music has been five years. I've been doing music since maybe 19 years old, but five years, I'd have to say. Five, five years of making music, that's, that's pretty impressive. I know that your, um, your Instagram and like just from checking you out on social media, you have built yourself a, a following. I've tried, so I'm still pushing. No, you're st yeah, still moving forward mm -hmm. always, but you have, there's, there's accomplishments to be, be proud of with Thank your, you. with your following. That's, um, like, I don't even know how I don't even know how we ran into each other on Instagram, but it <laughs> happened, and networking, I was like, "Yeah, networking." And I believe in divine timing, and everything is meant to happen. That was the conversation we had, I think. Yeah, everything is about manifesting, and what my mission is could have to do with what your mission is as well. So yeah. maybe we're meant to help each other with yeah. that too. So yeah, I, I definitely made it a mission of mine to make sure to get out here because I've been wanting to take the podcast somewhere else other than just Akron, Ohio, because it is the dream tour. Right. So it has it has to go places. And exactly. Where better to start, you know, than where where America started? You know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. 
And Philly, I mean, you can't beat it out here. It's so diverse. Yeah. And historically, of course. It's yeah. a good area just to get inspiration. So. Yeah, I went and checked out the city today. Um, we walked around. We visited, I think it was like Chinatown. We, um, oh, see? Yeah, we went um, down to... Uh, like the historical area, we just like walked city, around uh, what is it, city hall. Yeah, yeah, and it's then it's nice out here. Right? Yeah, it we, really is. We didn't go in and like see the Liberty Bell or anything, but like we like saw the building that it was in. I haven't in. even seen the Liberty Bell yet. I haven't seen anything. Yeah, yet. and I've been here a minute. Like, it's definitely a good area. Yeah, it's, it was super cool. There was a there was a lot going on, and it's it's definitely a lot different than the city that I'm from because you know. There's, Akron, right? Yeah, Akron. So there's, Akron. you know, there's like maybe two hundred thousand people in Akron. So it's not, it's not big compared right. to this. This is huge, you know. Right. This is major. Yeah. So many people out here, but this is, I mean, like Akron's like just like fifty minutes from Cleveland. So and Cleveland's pretty oh, big, see, but I don't think, that. I don't think Cleveland's like as big as Philly. I don't know, like, population-wise, but I'm pretty sure Philly's, like, twice the size of Probably, because we're, like, one of the major cities, like, D.C. and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but, you know, people can't sleep on other cities, like, where y'all from. Oh, yeah. There's so much talent is everywhere. Yeah, I mean, the, the crazy thing is, like, um, I was listening to a podcast on the way up here today, mm -hmm. and they were talking about how um, the big, big podcasters who, like, really started this off with... Um, just a, just a lot of the guys who have like took like comedians right. who have taken to podcasting may have like kind of removed the nest like you don't have to be in New York or LA to pop off now exactly you, you don't need that now anymore. with the internet and everything and how people manipulate and can really hone in on working the system mm -hmm. and the algorithms you can be anywhere you could be under a rock and if you have Wi-Fi you can still make it over somebody who's in the Bronx, Manhattan, or any major city. is yeah. how you're willing to put the work ethic yeah, for. Yeah, because you have bigger reach than anyone on the internet. Then You have the most same reach as everyone. Yes, everyone, everyone has the same exactly. potential reach. So when people say, you know, you got to be in L.A. now at our generation, no. Yeah. It's, you don't need to go to L.A. to get big at no, anything. No. You can, you can do it online. I mean, shoot. Didn't it, wasn't Lil Nas, like... He came up off of TikTok, right? Yes, he did actually. Oh, what was the song? Old it was Town Road, yeah, right? it was Old Town Road. Everyone and did the it dance just started to it. The challenge. If you're good at digital creation of anything, creating challenges, you could be anywhere and just pop off any social media platform. Yeah, I mean, it's just how much you're willing to put forth and figure out what everybody's paying attention to nowadays. Do you do you use TikTok? I actually don't. You don't use TikTok. I'm and surprised. And I should. I should. But for me, I haven't even used Twitter. I guess I'm one of those I people. I got rid of Twitter. Come, right. I can't. Like, I'm so comfortable on Instagram that that's like home base for mm -hmm. me. Yeah. And I know I should branch out, but you know when you're just comfortable. Yeah. I've um, I've been getting used to Instagram. I've kind of been getting my rhythm and like kind of figuring out like what I like to post, what I... What um what I want to post more of like because I want my Instagram to become a little more personal. Right. It's it's uh, become a lot of just my brand, but you know, as I grow it, I can move away from just posting certain like right. all clips or all quotes. I try to get like you know a decent combination of clips of the podcast and motivational quotes and just other stuff. But I want to add more of like like a picture of just being in Philly, you know, stuff like right. that, you know. Just something personal to who you are outside of stuff. Yeah. That's kind of the problem I have with social media because it's my brand. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to separate the two. Yeah, it's hard. It gets hectic because it's like you want to just feed your fan base and mm -hmm. everything so you don't know how to differentiate the two. But yeah. It's possible. Everybody's doing it who's a celebrity, mm -hmm. so we it's can do it. It's hard to remember, like, you know, like, in 2013, 2014 Instagram. Like, oh, my god! Like, it just came out. It was so new. We didn't know what it was. We were just excited. Mm, let me put a filter on my picture. Yeah, just yeah. Five, as much as I can. A hundred <laughs> hashtags. You right. Know? It's just like a selfie. Right. Let me take a selfie in the bathroom and put it out and... Oh, I'm you got a bunch of 30 likes. likes. <laughs> 30 likes was a lot for us yeah. when it first came out. I, mean, shoot, I was probably a freshman in high school or like in middle oh school when it came gosh. out. So I can't even remember. I might have yeah. just graduated. I'm not even 21. 
Yeah, I was in college, probably. <laughs> yeah. So it was it was just like a different world, and like I want to like I'm. I'm with the movement, make Instagram casual again. I want yeah, people to post casual pictures because, sure. like, I never see my friends' stuff. When I'm on... The algorithms change so frequently now, and since everybody's trying to make money off Instagram, mm-hmm. you don't see that laid back type of vibe anymore. You see, everybody's trying to be something like that maybe you just want to be, and everybody is not seeing the real you at the same mm-hmm. time. Everything's just let me yeah. look the best I can, but what are you really going through that day? It's yeah. You don't see the realism anymore. Yeah, that's that's why like my page, it's it's clips from what I do and it's quotes. It's there's nothing there's nothing made up about what I'm doing there. It's just right. stuff that's going on or just a motivation for the day, something like that. It's it's a uh, it's a weird. Uh, Instagram's been weird, but I, I'm i pretty sure there was a recent, like, the most recent change to the algorithm was supposed to make you see more of your friend's stuff or something like that. It was supposed to, and then I heard that if you're not getting a certain amount of likes or something like that, that it's going to show you less of your friend's posts, which is why now you don't get as many likes as you used to get. Like, when I post something now, mm-hmm. I used to get so many interactions. And it went down to 50% less than what I had before. Really? So the algorithm I know right now is very hard. And they're making you almost fight for engagements on social media platforms because they know what they can do with it, you know? That people are trying to make themselves something now. Yeah, that's... It's it's too much. It's too much that they're trying to change it on you so you, like... Because, like, if you know what works, you know how to get your post out there, you know, to get yourself some right. interactions, you know, how to get on explore pages and exactly. meet new people and get new, new fans and stuff. And that's working and they switch it up on you. And, they... and it just ruins a lot of people at the same time because, you know, we used to look at it fun and now everybody looks at it like, well, it's Instagram's new algorithm today. How yeah. can I get more likes? But we're not really engaging for real social engagements now. It's just, Social media, you're actually not even connected with people anymore. Yeah, it's, it's weird. Like it is weird. You're just posting now, and you're robotic. Mm-hmm. That's that's my one thing though. It's like uh, people will be like, social media is so bad for you, mm-hmm. and or and some people are like, social media is the best tool in the world. I I think social media is what what um what, it's just a platform, you know. It's just a it's, it's just a platform. Like if I have a table, and on my table. It's a bunch of drugs. Mm-hmm. Are you gonna call the table bad? <laughs> you know, if, yeah. or if I have a table and on that table is you know exactly. flowers and chocolates right. and you good stuff, you know, the good. table didn't do that. Right, yeah. exactly. So that's just the platform just... that people are putting their stuff on. So exactly. I don't, I don't like when people like say that like you know social media is bad. Right, you're following yeah. the wrong pages. Yeah, exactly. It's not, and we ultimately make it what it is. Mm-hmm. So whether you want to put good stuff out there, bad stuff, I don't know. Did you ever like make a change from just like when you went from casual social media to your professional brand, and like notice that like the stuff like because when I did I did it recently. It's it's only since I really started working on my Instagram. It's, it hasn't even been like six months. So when that happened, just a month in, everything that I was seeing turned from like you know, world star and mm-hmm. bull crap news and right. just like almost darker mindseted stuff to, you know, work hard, positivity and like it flipped and like I didn't do any I didn't do anything but start posting that way. It's also what you bring about or what you think about you bring about. If you're out there looking for something in particular, it's like now it's just coming to everybody yeah with social media i did see a change because i always talk about manifestations Mm -hmm. and stuff like that i'm not even following pages like that it's just popping up in my feed you know and good what you think about is positivity that's what you want to see on your feed anyway Mm -hmm. yeah so it's been fine for me ever since but it's definitely been different it's so wild though like Mm -hmm. just like just knowing that like just me changing how i was going at 
social media, it adjusted right. to me. Like it it's adjusted. weird. It's so it's like it's not creepy. sending a you creepy, those but. harsh videos that maybe we used to be interested in because oh your friends like you gotta watch this world star video now it's seeing you for what you really are because that's what you're putting out on mm-hmm. there anyway. Yeah, so. yeah. You um like uh I'm trying to think like even like with what music you listen to if you're mm-hmm. listening to sad music I feel like you just feel sad and then yeah. you listen to happy music you feel happier. You think know? about it, like water. You seventy percent water. You put water under music that's just going to be rock music or anything it stimulates mm-hmm. the way it's supposed to stimulate it so with music you listen to sad music it's going to make you sad yeah happy music same thing everything is frequencies and vibrations and what you hear is putting it into your body so same thing with what you see yeah i, l- I love the vibrations like just just i don't know how to like articulate how I feel about it but like ever since I've just started thinking about the fact that everything is vibrating at a certain frequency right. and like we have a sense for that mm-hmm. that like we don't under completely understand yet exactly. like even like like if you go and try and like like I'm a very literal person mm-hmm. so like like when something when someone tells me something I'm like I need like some like like scientists to tell me right. that this is this is real and if you do go like go online and mm-hmm. search like the research of vibrations or just like what we call vibes yeah like the vibes There's and the vibes energy you get from people yeah like it's you it's, can almost see somebody's aura mm-hmm. if you pay attention to it yeah and there's real studies out there that prove that like mm-hmm. ev- the vibrational frequencies of people and every living thing you know from trees to or not trees exactly. even rocks yeah. like everything has a vibrational everything. frequency everything and um has an aura. you can you can sense that and you don't even notice you can sense that and you can change it you can change exactly. your um exactly it's crazy wow. right like when you think about it, it's like life is such common sense but not everybody puts it into that like bracket yeah. everything that our creator has given us is common sense but nobody pays attention to it vibes yeah. everything that's what you would think of i, I think <laughs> i think you like a lot of like stroke like a lot of things in the world come down to people thinking more than they need to about stuff overanalyzing yeah. to a T like, oh my gosh just too much thinking into something that's right there it's like when somebody hides something in plain sight you're mm-hmm. looking somewhere else when it's right in your face. You ever been like, like, um, like looking for the ranch in the fridge, oh my and you're gosh. like looking, looking, and looking, right and then there. you step back, one step back, you see the ranch. You see you the see ranch. It. It's right there. All the time. All oh the time. my gosh! It, it's so. It's the mind is interesting. Yeah, that that step back, be it metaphorical or just mm-hmm. looking for the ranch, like that step back is key. Exactly. It, we take, all have to always take a step back because all of us get to that point where we overanalyze everything. Yeah. The smallest things. Yeah, and it's it's not like it's that bad of a th- it's that bad of a thing because we all do it. We're all yeah. gonna we're all gonna think too hard about something. But if you just remember, like, like what I try to remember is um, at nighttime before I go to bed, mm-hmm. take one moment to step back from my day. Uh, just one moment yeah. to step back from my day. Like you know, think I. A lot, a lot of people say write it down. I just think it, but like I think yeah. a few things I'm thankful for that day, like a few things I was gratitude. happy about. Yeah, practice a little bit of gratitude. Take mm-hmm. a step back from my day and be like, all right, day over, new day tomorrow. Good job. Let's I'm move on. You, that gratitude that you reflect on really helps you. Mm-hmm. It could be so small to some people, but once you ponder on the blessings you have, you start to bring more. Instead of, oh my gosh, I had such a terrible day. I hit my foot on the bed. You start to spiral. When yeah. at those moments in your life, you pinpoint, okay, I'm going to change how I feel about what just happened. And I'm going to be happy after something bad just happened. You start changing everything, your whole mind. Not even your whole mind, but just the people. You change the people around you. Definitely. Because, you know, if I came in here and I was talking to you, I was like, dang, my day sucked. Mm-hmm. I slipped. I fell in the ice in, in Philly. Nearby. And you, yeah, and you'd be like, "Yeah, man, I was slipping on the ice over there." Right. Like you want to exactly. relate. Exactly. And then, then if someone's preaching, everybody preacher, starts spiraling. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. a snowball effect. You can bring the whole room down right. with one bad, you know, one Your one bad positive attitude. Vibes like a battery. Everybody gonna get charged up. Mm-hmm. But you negative. We all gonna feel it the same way. Yeah. Ex- so yeah. You can you can feel it. You know, just anywhere you go, you can you can. 
You can feel that energy. You can see mm-hmm. those vibes. You can see it. You can feel it. So um, I want to talk about a couple of the other things you do, though. Um, For sure. So we talked a little bit about your music, but you also are an entrepreneur. Yeah. So can you give us a little bit of a little break or a little introduction to what you do, so I can and we'll and we'll riff raff off of there. For sure. So outside of Bonnie, I am an entrepreneur who still goes by Bonnie, but I started Christian Nicole Promotions. Mm-hmm. And for a lot of people, they don't know that that's actually my two middle names, Christian Nicole. Oh. So I kept my name and put promotions on it. And what I do is I find connections that nobody dares to go seek for because they're not, not doing that's it. That's how I make shoes through Christian <laughs> right, Nicole Promotions. Exactly. And I solidify connections and I flip services based around it because I have these connections that people don't have. So... I've based my whole business off of public relations. I get people on major blogs, you know, mm-hmm. to major article write-ups. I do pitching services, you know, a lot of things that artists don't feel like doing is the stuff that I do. Yeah. Do you have any, um, like, formal training in, like, writing those articles or blog posts? Or are you self-taught? Yeah. Self-taught. I went to yes. college. Yes. I like that. That's Thank what I'm all you. about. I went to college for basketball. Uh, community college because my grades and I was supposed to transfer oh, really? out to D1. That's but, super cool. Right? Like, but I dropped out mm-hmm. because I went to uh, business courses and public relations courses and I was like, you know what? This is dumb. <laughs> I already know <laughs> what to do and I'm wasting time here. I'm not going to be a doctor. When you're doing something in this field, entrepreneurial, you need to go dive out there in the streets and Figure it out. There's no personally. better way to learn than doing something. Doing something and yeah. nobody can teach you this. Yeah. You have to want it. I, it's it, not easy. There's no way in the world that someone could have te- taught me how to have this no. podcast. There's, oh my it, God. Like, how, no. could, how, could I, how could I put this in a class? <laughs> nobody is going to teach you, hey, this is what I think you're good at. You know what you're good at. They're not going to do nothing but tell you what they think is best for you. But what is best for you is how, what you how think. How do they know? Yeah. And like people, people are gonna tell you what what they think is best for you in their mind. You know, exactly. it's not they, they. Their perception of you, and that's always my yeah. They don't know people's perspectives on who I'm supposed to be. It's what you think you're supposed to be, and that's who you are. Yeah, because so who do it? <laughs> how people only know as much of you as you give to them. Exactly. As much information as you give to them about yourself is how much. But not, and it's not necessarily information you give to them, like just through words, through actions, mm-hmm. through exactly. act. People learn more from your actions than they ever so care they about start your work. Putting words. their own story together. Yeah, they put. But this is your thing to do. Yeah, they put your story on whatever, whatever mm-hmm. it is you do. Exactly. And they're like, ah, oh, go to school, go to school, go <laughs> this to school. This is the best thing for you to do, do the, son. Do the thing. Let me tell you. <laughs> you need to go finish school. Yeah, I am. Um, yeah, I won't be going back to school. No, and I never tell people, you know, hey. Don't go to college because that's not what I did. Maybe that's something Maybe that's they should do. But, you know, for what I need to do and what I know I need to accomplish, look at me. If I was still in school, I would have followed suit with what my parents' uh, formula was supposed to be for me. Mm-hmm. And they thought I was a terrible person for dropping out of school. Mm-hmm. You know, But, look, but look, look at you now. They never thought. And it took a minute for them to realize that, hey, I'm not just a musician. I'm making money doing other things. Do mm-hmm. you think I'm just doing something else? Yeah. So, so like, you were entirely, you don't answer anyone, right? You, no. You answered yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Are you the type of, like, I'm the type of person that personally, like, if I had to work for someone every day for the rest of my life, it would drive me crazy. Completely <laughs> bonkers. Like, oh, I can't my. do it. And it's not because, you know... I have anything against the person. It's just... It's not natural to me. It's not natural, and I have X amount of time on this earth. I am not about to pursue this to help you in your job because this is not my passion. This is not my career choice. But, yeah, you know? and that's what this... That's what the, the idea behind this show is. Is, you know, there's a lot of... There's a lot of big pictures, you know. There's a lot of small little ideas within the show, but I think... Right. The, the biggest idea on this show for me is to show everyone out there that watches, that tunes in, that, that people like you do exist. Like, you're doing what you want to do. You're doing what you love yes. instead of doing what everyone else thought you should have done and you're succeeding exactly. at. Exactly. Like, 
there's it's proof right here that if you do love something and you want to work at it, you can you can do it. You can obtain anything you wish to. It's just you're going to have to be that person mm -hmm. to be on top of yourself. It's not you against anybody. It's you against yourself. Mm -hmm. And all I would have to say, if you wish to be an entrepreneur or pursue something that takes guts for real, you have to do it now. There's no there's no plan B. You ever been anywhere but now? Because I haven't. No. I have never been. Any, I haven't been. I have worked one job maybe for three months, and that's only because I just felt like getting some more money to invest in myself. There has never been a time where I had to answer to anybody. Really? Yeah. I chose not to, and I did whatever it took not to. Yeah. I just, yeah. I want to prove to people out there that do have a dream that it's like, you know, the only time you have is right now because you can't you can't make a decision tomorrow you can't make a decision yesterday you can make one decision right now yeah that's that's your option is make a decision right now do do something or don't do something then later yeah you keep waiting you're just wasting time mm -hmm. just wasting and so if you do have that dream out there and you're thinking about doing something just take that first step it doesn't even have to be a big step it doesn't like don't quit your job yeah i bought a microphone <laughs> Go right. on Amazon, buy yourself a microphone, right. see what you can do with that. Right. Mess with Start it. Start on the weekends yeah. and just see if you actually really want to pursue it or if you're even interested in it because you may have this spark of an idea and come to find out you don't actually like it and you tried it though. That's but, what it uh, takes. You have to try something. Yeah. And that's how you figure out if, hey, I want to work for somebody else because I don't want that responsibility or I don't want to work for nobody and i want all the responsibility yeah or oh man this isn't this is too much responsibility for just me i'm gonna need me a partner or two, right you let, know let like, figure you'll figure it out about. you'll figure it out as exactly. you go i feel like there's this there's a big like stigma around having your stuff figured out yeah. in society and it's like nobody has it figured nobody, out <laughs> let me tell you right now i've been doing this a minute and i still am figuring stuff out every day I'm the only one in my family who took on becoming an entrepreneur, so I, I didn't have no help. I figured out how, oh, wow. oh my gosh, I don't know how to do taxes. Oh, I'm just going to have to figure that out. I don't know how to do file my business and get, get a license. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to do none of it. And you know what? It, it hit me, and I had to figure it out. And that's just what a lot of people have to do. Don't be scared. It's life. Yeah. It's life. And then, yeah, yeah. Don't be scared, but you know, you're gonna you might feel scared, but don't act scared. You right. know? Right. Just know everything is once it happens, you look it over and figure out where to go from there. Nothing in your life is point A your whole life figured out. Nothing is like that, you know what I'm I mean? I don't I don't even have dinner figured out most days. No, I have nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. I don't it's, it's yeah, it's it's kinda crazy that people are like like talking to some seventeen year old kid and like, what are you gonna do for the rest of your right. life? As what? If they know, so many different <laughs> options to be granted to somebody way past seventeen, you know. Oh my gosh. At seventeen years old, I still didn't know like like I went to college mm -hmm. at eighteen, you know. So at seventeen I still, like, it was a shock to me when I went to college and I was like, man, I gotta buy shampoo, conditioner, and toothpaste? Everything. That that stuff doesn't just appear in the cupboard? Right, and oh my gosh, man, I had a story for college. I went to college and I had a basketball scholarship. Mm -hmm. I went to college and I had to get an apartment and I went with $750. Guess who paid for me to get my uh, security deposit for my apartment? Nobody. So... I went to college with zero dollars, oh, and I had to cancel everything and quit school and quit basketball, which is ultimately why I decided to pursue this venture. I didn't have the help I needed, but you can't always depend on somebody to help you and your family or anything. Yeah, and you got to be the one to just figure it out, even when crap hits the fan and you. And you know when that door shut on you, this this whole other door that you've been. I, I'd say killing this whole other door has been, has uh, opened up for you. So, you know. Right. It could have been God's plan the whole time. Yeah, who knows what <laughs> basketball would have been right. doing for you I right now. I would have been cooking for a minute. You still play a little bit? Yes, yes. Yeah. I, I was really good. You know, I was getting recruited by D1 schools. 
uh, I did have some terrible grades, so I had to go to community college, and yeah. I played for a, a Olympic uh, Olympic coach, and she played for the Mystics, and okay, I just sweet. wasn't able to finish out school because I didn't have any family, and it's community college. You mm -hmm. have to pay to live on the yeah, property you, you and live, stuff. Yeah. Uh, here I am, 18, no job, pursuing basketball and school. I couldn't do all of it, so. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a lot without a sport to go to school and pay yeah. your rent and work. I'm going to try and to do all three, so we figure it out, though. Yeah, I can't imagine, like, because, like, working, going to school, and still having somewhat of a social life is almost impossible. Lord, it is. Uh, and so I can't even imagine throwing in, you know, let's practice every day. Right. <laughs> Gabby, you better be at practice right after uh, you're working at some crappy restaurant. Oh. If you're not there, just leave the basketball team. That, yeah, that's, that's that's crazy. That's life, though. You know, it, it throws you some curveballs. But I guarantee anybody who wants to be something in life, you're going to figure out a plan B and make it do what it do. Plan B, C, D, mm -hmm. E, F. Whatever but, you need to get to. The, if you just keep coming up with plans, eventually one has to work. <laughs> Yeah, one's gonna work. You gotta so. put in the work, but exactly everything, everything requires work. So, um, with like working on all those articles and stuff, do you get to meet some pretty interesting people, or is it mainly is it mainly artists? I meet a lot of different people, from clothing designers to um, people who used to be producing for like Trey songs and okay. Sean Kingston. I've done oh, work with celebrities. Justice. I've done work for makeup artists. I've met so many people. And I implemented my business with music because I knew it would help me. Mm -hmm. With what I do, I'm helping people who can help me at the same time. Mm -hmm. I'm meeting and intertwining myself with celebrities and stuff. So at the end of the day, I'm getting some key connections that will benefit me some type of way too. Yeah, yeah. It's especially like just in the business world, like, Mutual connect, just connections are usually mutually beneficial. Like yes. you know, no matter if, if someone else is an entrepreneur, or someone else is in the business world, someone else is a creator, a producer, yes. a rapper, a singer, whatever it is. If you meet them, you check their stuff out. They check mm -hmm. your stuff out. Right. That's that's a benefit to both of you. No matter if nothing happens after exactly. you both giving each other a play. Exactly. You know, you either both give each other a play, nothing mm -hmm. happens, or you both give each other a play and. You make a collab and you right. make a hit song. Or, or they just like the work you do. Yeah, they you have word of mouth support, that helps yeah. too. So S they send a like here. They right. send a like and a comment. Something. That means a lot. You know exactly, exactly. But people, people who aren't putting stuff out don't necessarily know how. You're like just a, a quick a hundred emoji on Instagram. That's right. that's nice. Just that a really little bit supports. of love. I mean, people be so stingy on Instagram. Social with their likes. Like, I'm like, what the heck? Somebody told me it was, I will never forget, a client a long time ago said, I'm not the type of artist to comment on anybody's content I like because it'll ruin my star reputation. Who are you? Number one. But number two, you don't get nowhere like that. Like, that's how are you going to grow are, like that? Right. These platforms are meant for you to engage and stuff like that. So it's pretty interesting the type of people I see but yeah. I feel like the, that guy like even if you don't want to like interact with people just start a beef right start a beef you in might the as comments. well just start beefing with everybody <laughs> in your genre just go at everybody yeah it's it's all it's you all business well. it's all part of the game right everybody would know oh he looking for a beef so yeah. it's 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 viral this is potential viral yeah. yeah if you're gonna <laughs> If you're not cool with comment. co commenting support, go ahead. Beef, right, beef with exactly. someone. I just don't. I don't. I don't get the need to like not want to comment. I feel like uh, I throw comments at everything I see. I'm, I'm a big commenter. That's what I do. Like I mean, and it helps people see your profile too, because somebody. That's who how I gain my followers is right, off exactly. of commenting you on comment other people's like stuff. You like ten comments a day. I'm telling you, you're gonna look at your Instagram feed and be like. Oh well, I didn't see this person before, and now they're showing you. Oh, I'm interested in being on your podcast or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's all about reaching out to people like that, and it helps yeah. you. You leave a nice comment on some other some other person's post, and they're like, and then someone mm -hmm. sees that comment, and they're like, oh, let me right, check like, this page. Oh, I didn't know. I never seen this person. Let me check out yeah. their content. Boom! I'm gonna tell Big Tom and Harry about this guy. Boom! Yeah. <laughs> 
You gotta get your name out there somehow. Right, exactly. And commenting is the easiest way to start. And the most non cost factor. Yeah, there's like, you're your, not paying anything. There's your free advice on free page growth. Anyone who's trying to grow your page, comment on free, people's stuff. It's free to engage on content. Don't look at yourself like a superstar. Even a superstar is willing to comment if you're a real person. Comment, leave likes, even follow people, and you'll see growth on your page. Like, you can check your insights and see, oh, I went up 50% in impressions. You mm-hmm. follow that, and it'll just help you on that algorithmic scale yeah. of Instagram. So, it's yeah. easy. Do you Facebook at all? I, I'm tr- <sighs> Yo, I I'm- used to Facebook constantly, and then I switched over because so many people were using Instagram, and now... I get the most business off Instagram, but don't shy away from Facebook. It's just now it's a different way of trying to utilize it, I yeah. guess, for me. Like, I'm just getting into Facebook, but like, because, like, you know, I was like kind of like, I maybe had a Facebook when I was like 12 <laughs> for like one year, and then I got an Instagram and never used Facebook again. Mm-hmm. So I never learned how, like, the culture of Facebook or like the, like, <laughs> I don't. I don't know the the vibe I'll of Facebook you right now. They're a little bit harsh on Facebook because a lot of people have them catfish profiles <laughs> or troll profiles, and they just start coming at you, trolling on there a lot. But yeah, I mean Twitter's like that too. Twitter's yeah, got all the troll profiles. Super troll over there, but it's how you utilize it or utilize it. I think I said that wrong, but um, yeah, I think that's right. <laughs> I think that's right. <laughs> yeah, but you were going like. I guess the Facebook groups, so say they have radio groups on there or people who are looking for a promotion and you could post your podcast Mm -hmm. daily in there or even do a live podcast. Yeah. Just playing maybe artist music one day, Mm -hmm. Friday night or something. And you could start gaining more traffic that way too. Mm -hmm. They'll be like, well, how do I get on their podcast interviews? What are their requirements and stuff like that? Everybody can utilize all these platforms. It's just how do we use it for our type of brand? Yeah. Like, that would no, benefit you it, for sure. Like, it's crazy. With real world marketing advice that I went, I went to, I went to marketing, to school mm-hmm. for marketing. And there's people who were in my marketing major who could never give that type of, you know, like, Wow. explanation of real world marketing because that's real world marketing right there what that's you're talking you about being on the i guess the street aspect of things and you just getting shut down certain areas figuring out okay that strategy doesn't work how am i going to go around that and figure out how to make it work for me and you start figuring out different things that work and you just yeah you can't be taught it i guess that's I, just what it is. Too. I can't. I, I can't get behind like grades representing <laughs> intelligence because some of yeah. the most intelligent My people God. I know are some of the were <laughs> some of the worst students I know. <laughs> people driving Lambos are dropouts. Mm-hmm. Just about half the time, like teachers. You know, I don't. I, I applaud them for going through what they're going through, but a lot of us that have that. It's just like, what are they? What they're teaching you isn't necessarily for everyone. No, no, and a lot of stuff you're not even utilizing right now. In yeah, life. like I'm not using algebra in what I do. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, see, but the thing is, I think school, like I'm, I like to like go devil's advocate on everything and yeah. everything I go with. So like school, I definitely think there's a lot of flaws, but yeah. in a lot of with a lot of flaws, there's a lot of successes. You know, we want to have success. I mean, none of us would know anything without, you know, the basics of school, you know? Of we wouldn't know how to read and write right. and all that, all that the stuff. The basics we need. Consumer yeah, we... math and stuff like that, mm-hmm. that's essential. You need to know how to do your taxes, balance your checkbook. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that school teaches lessons that we don't realize we were taught, like social skills yeah. and hard work or getting a detention if you don't follow the rules. Right. You know, exactly. it teaches you small lessons that... If you're willing to, like, you don't necessarily, not everyone learns those lessons, but those are some lessons that are in the school that are, like, I think that's a part of the the reason. reason. 
keep a child at a home school, they're not going to learn half as much as what they were learning. You sending them out there in the With real social world. skill, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's one of the aspects of school that like, I think it's so important that we maintain the kids in that group because never again in my life Will I be with, I mean, I graduated with 150 kids, which isn't crazy, a crazy amount, but never again in my life will I be with 150 people my age, mm-hmm. five days a week, you know, three-fourths of the year. Right. Never again will I be around that many people who are cha- who are put to the same task ever again. Right. And you learn a lot in that. I don't exactly know exactly what I'm going to use out of it yet. <laughs> I'm so young, um, but I know that I've used some stuff. Right. And I'm probably going to use some more of that. Exactly. You'll be like, you'll look back and you're like, oh, I know. School that I really like, didn't don't, that most people don't need, but I love is like history stuff. Because I'll, I'll go watch myself a history documentary History's and I'm like, favorite. oh, I love it. I love it. That's my favorite. And actually, I think, honestly, that's the most important. You learn what not to repeat in your life by learning what History. went yeah. on back then and you know I think it's a very just, essential thing to learn as a child yeah. just even knowing like what went on from like 1920s to mm-hmm. from the 1920s to 2020 if you know what went on in that time mm-hmm. like you can add that to your life because the last right. 100 years like that's actually important in your life I think everyone should know what went down in the last 100 years exactly. so you can just make so decisions accordingly. Right, exactly. Yeah, I I um I love some history though. And I love my yes. conspiracy theory history, all that Me fun too. stuff. Conspiracies are the What's your favorite? Oh my gosh, there's so much. I mean, John F. Kennedy's conspiracy. There aliens are definitely my niche. They're real. They're real. They're real. Yeah. They're, they're real. They're they're out and about. I just think <laughs> My personal belief on aliens is I think we're so dumb that they're not. it's not worth them visiting us. They look at us like we look at fish in a bowl. Yeah. Tap, but, tap, not important. Yeah, but also, <laughs> I guess on the other hand, like there's documentaries about ants and their lifestyle. So maybe they're oh shooting a documentary gosh. about us That'd and they're like... That's the most funniest thing ever. And they're like, look at these... And, right, we're in a, like a peachy dumb dish little, ant farm. Look at these dumb right. little... These little, Ape let's shake up the world, the little ant farm, and see how they act. <laughs> Cause yeah, I, we, we can't. There's so much, so much more to be learned. There is. There's, come on, there's so much out there, and you can't think we're the only ones. Oh my gosh, I was. The truth um, is out there. <laughs> I was messing around on TikTok and this thing came up about CPT three, which is um the, okay. it's the latest AI. I think it's from Musk and his company. But um, basically, they um, they released it on Reddit, and it just like talked to people, and nobody figured it out. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, like but, the Sophia, right? It, the I, little Twitter account that was interacting as mm-hmm. a human. Yeah, like something became, like that. Like, and it was human. actually, yeah. Oh. I don't know what this one. They released this one on Reddit, and it n- nobody figured out there was a robot the whole time. Yeah, and um, on the TikTok at the end it pauses it and it's like read this and it wrote a paper not a paper but it wrote a creative writing paragraph about how robots could never replace our creative writers and artists because they don't know how to do that and it wrote it. Shoot, they could probably replace a lot of us if it wrote it. <laughs> it was crazy. Some I was of us like, can't write. I was like, oh my gosh, that's the scariest thing I have ever seen. Oh my gosh. Imagine, I really hope that TikToker was like messing with me. I robot in the next couple years. Yeah, just I, like the movie. Oh, I hope that TikToker was bullcrapping me because you never know if that's real know. information like, or not. They have Let's some hope not. <laughs> fake stuff on there too. Oh, like, yeah. That would be so creepy. Yeah. So, um, today, well, just thinking conspiracy theories. Today, while we were walking around, I saw some pigeons. And I was like, "Oh, that's a government drone." <laughs> Imagine though, or it's just a camera. Just you ever seen a baby thinking. pigeon though? No, I haven't though. Yeah, Not a baby. Be- I've seen no leg pigeons and <laughs> no leg <laughs> pigeons. Oh my god! <laughs> I've I've never seen a baby pigeon, and I think that's proof that they're robots.
<laughs> You've never. Oh my gosh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a YouTube conspiracy theory that the government put out robot pigeons because you've never seen a baby one. I ask people all the time, you ever seen a baby pigeon? And nobody's told me yes yet. That's kind of scary. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out, like... It doesn't seem... Have I seen one at all? I've never... <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I've seen a baby of other birds. Every other creature. <laughs> I've never seen a pigeon baby in a nest. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Where do they hang out at? <laughs> You know what? You just cracked the code now, right there. Yeah, now you can't trust the pigeons. Right. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so scary, though. It's so, I, I don't even know I where that came across in my that. life, but as soon as I saw that YouTube video, I was like, oh my gosh. Pigeons I have never real. thought about that. Yo. Oh no, I'm going to go think about that tonight. Yeah. Oh my gosh. If you YouTube it, like, there's like this whole thing about it. Like, I think, um, in like, I want to say the 70s, there was some government, some protest against the government, yeah. and there was a bunch of people there with birds aren't real signs. <laughs> it's starting to make sense. Yeah, and it's like... Pigeons? Like, have you ever noticed how they're watching. indestructible they are? Yeah, they don't, they don't like, care either. I've you can see it low I don't see them. Paint, uh, pigeons, and they can get hit by everything and still survive in New York. Robot pigeons. Robot drone. <laughs> oh, speaking of robot pigeons, there's a. I didn't bring my like little question book with me because I'm trying to get away from that and go right. all free form. But there's one question I always like asking, and it's if you could have a superpower, what would it be? Hmm. <sighs> wow. I think it would be to. I don't know. Rewind time. Rewind time. Oh, wow. That's an interesting one. Because, like, you could do some cool stuff with that. Like, like you could see someone who's, like, about to trip and just be like... Right, and just... And then, like, pull the thing out. That Rick they and Morty, the situation. Just flip it back. And save that person. I mean, yeah, or you, could, or you could not. And you could right. just watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> just see just, someone fall into a pile of right, snow. Let's rewatch it. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. Yeah, I think that would be what I would want to do. Oh, my gosh. I mean, it might change the present, of course, but... Yeah, hey, but, like, also, know. like, you know, Super Bowl is tomorrow. You could you could watch the game, rewind, rewind it, it, bet, and then... Put the ball somewhere else myself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, could, you could win every bet. Though. Every bet. I could win them all. Oh, my gosh. You'd do great in Vegas. Exactly. Like, That's a great we'd, one. We'd be rich. Start to rewind time. I'd make all the... I'd make the song Don't Stop Believing Myself and put it out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one's that's never going to end. Right. It just keeps on going forever. Oh, Be my rich. gosh. Um, if I, I could do super speed because, like, I, like, like I could have, I could have, yeah, just, like, The Flash. That was one of my favorite shows. He could probably run back in time. That's how fast he runs. Yeah, I just want to be able to. Just, you know, run over here, grab a cheesesteak for lunch, right. and then, you know, three seconds. yeah, and then just, you know, eat my cheesesteak, run back home, you know, dinner time comes around, I'm gonna hit a deep dish in Chicago. Right, that uh, would come in handy for what you do. Yeah. Only got five minutes before this next podcast. <laughs> Exactly. Just ate a whole sandwich. Yeah, and I like. I love traveling. Like this was so cool for me to get out of town. I haven't been able to travel at all since the COVID oh, stuff. Oh my gosh! This I've the... had cabin fever my whole life. Yeah. This whole year, like, it's just so different now. Like, but at least I'm getting out. So here, let's talk. Um, what's the best and the worst thing that came out of 2020 for you? I'm gonna let you know right now. My business boomed during quarantine yeah online business you know online business and i've been telling everybody everything's going into online business you see these businesses with kiosks now at mcdonald's some of them you're not even going in to see people you're ordering off the little kiosk because mm -hmm. people don't want to pay employees and people don't want to have liabilities anymore in the future mm -hmm. so everything's online based which is why i wanted to really do my business and boom, there you go. Yeah. Everybody want to be a rapper too, and do Everybody, their yeah. own stuff. So I'm the person to come to for yeah. publication. One thing I really want to do is I want to do like I want to organize live performances. Mm -hmm. I don't 
I just want to put it together and be like, hey, I want to yeah do the advertising, run the right. ad, I'll run the ad campaign, I'll sell like I'll sell the tickets through my website, mm-hmm. and I know I know artists I I work with um, Forever Forty Four. It's a label based out of Akron, a new label that has a couple guys, oh, and then wow. I work with them. The person who I had a person who was going to come with me today to meet mm-hmm. you. His his name is Tone. He's um yeah he's a rapper and I work with him and a couple of my other friends nice. and they um they make music so whenever we can start getting people together I want to start doing yes. I don't know what oh size gosh. to start with but whatever size I can start with I'm gonna do you know right just see how it goes you know, the first round you gotta find a venue mm-hmm. figure all that out but once they get back to that like that's something that's super interesting to me because I think there's just something different about live performance if you look at that live performance then you should also go into the virtual performances too now. Because with this whole normalizing quarantine stuff, I guarantee you it's going to be the next best thing is holograms and and the zoos and aquariums. So next best thing for concerts is virtual. You could be right there paying $5,000 to see Tory Lanez right here as a hologram. And I guarantee you people will pay for it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And I don't know if... um. You keep if you like if you would have seen this, but do you see the new Nokia phone? I haven't seen that. I don't know if it was real or not. I hope it was. I I hope I'm not spreading fake news oh here. Gosh, but it was a picture. It was a phone. It looked like it was about this big. Had a little typing box. Oh. A little typing box, a camera, and a hologram projector. That's probably. That would be amazing. Yeah, and it was this little thing, and just it looks like all you do is you know you're making hologram calls and texts. Imagine FaceTime. You put the phone down. Boom! I could see who I'm talking to walking to work. Yeah. They're walking. It was. It seemed crazy, but like apparently Nokia's on some really big stuff. I bet. Where are they? Nokia Nokia to the moon. Japan or over there, Mm -hmm. China or Japan. They're uh, advanced for sure. They have robotic security, mm-hmm. um, which I think is a great idea too. Look at everything robotic. Robotic yeah. surgery is happening now. Yeah, no, well, because five G. Once once we have five G, mm-hmm. like you don't need an an average surgeon to perform your mm-hmm. surgery. You can have the best surgeon in the world and do it with, through a robotic arm. A crane, literally doing mm-hmm. it all. So. This, this, Everything's this, gonna start changing. This 5G rollout's gonna be crazy. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Just anyone who's doing any type of business, doing anything in your life, you know, the only constant in life is change. Change. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing that there that will always be there is change. Change will always be there. So just be ready for that. You know? Exactly. Like exactly. accept it. Embrace it. <laughs> I'm like I'm ready for what's new. That's that's the right, I, that's exactly. the mentality you have to have to succeed. I feel like. Exactly, and you start learning the changes that are happening, and you start implementing it to how it can help you. Once you get mm-hmm. a, a ahead of the curve, figure mm-hmm. out how you can implement it too. Honestly, can't wait to see like what the world's like in five years. You know, what yeah. the world's like. I, what I th- hope it's holograms, and I see some, a couple of flying cars. Not even flying cars, the self-driving cars oh. yeah, that I know are out. Yeah, so and it'll be interesting. Yeah, I think Tesla like. It's pretty open with their information, mm-hmm. so like their research and stuff, like they're pretty open with that. So the other car companies are probably, I'm assuming, they're all going to be putting out stuff just like it. They should. They should copy and paste what is working and free energy. Tesla, you can't go wrong. That's what we should have been using from day one, not Edison at all. But well, you know, Edison makes. It's my my it's my home state guy. <laughs> He's my home state guy, but oh, not I don't I'm not a huge fan. You can't, it's money. Everything is money. But free energy is where we should go. It helps the universe, too. Everything yeah. like that. And I'm pro-Earth, because we are tearing up the planet. So. Yeah. I, the one thing, though, that's su- actually super nice is, like, yes, we need to continue to save the planet. But if you do look at some numbers just from, like, you know, 2010 mm-hmm. to 2020, we've made some progress, finally. We have. We finally made some progress we have, in God. the positive direction. Like, with the... um. With, I think it's the ozone layer. It has really made some progress in the ozone Thanks layer. That's the biggest thing. I know thing. we had a hole in it, mm-hmm. but as long as we aren't doing any more damage, yeah. I'm happy. I'm, pr- I'm not, like, I'm 
I don't know when I, I saw this, but it was probably two months ago, and it was like from 2010 to 2020, we've really made a, like a big chunk in improvement because mm-hmm. like we've really cut down emissions and stuff we like have. that. Yeah. And then with the Teslas and stuff too that everybody's looking at, of course that's gonna help. Oh, one of, purchasing. one of the last things that Trump signed on was um that by I think 2030, maybe it might have been 2025, mm-hmm. but 2030 or 2025, one of those years in five or ten years we won't be allowed to build any more gasoline powered engines the or something like that patronism whatever yeah, that so we're is finally, they're he's, cutting that down he's signed something into or he's yeah he passed a bill that the house put up and um we're gonna be getting moving away from gas powered cars which i think is awesome that would help everything the emissions like that really plays a part what? Oh, the camera is not recording. One sec. Did uh, it's all right. No, it stopped, but it'll. It we probably got at least a good chunk. Yeah, we'll. See. We got forty eight minutes. Okay. So we only missed a couple. We'll come, we'll just come back in here real quick. It must have. I must have got um a power notification or something. I'm just playing with this. I'm getting my phone vibrating uh. the whole time. All right, well, it's gonna, it'll be a picture at the end. That's okay. No problem. Yeah, I ran out, the phone's running out of storage. I have a bunch of videos in that app, so I'm going to have to clear it out. Yeah. I'm hoping to move to a DSLR camera here. The end of the podcast will just be audio only, but that happens, that happens here and there because the, uh, especially, even with like a nice camera, most of them can only record 30 to 30 minutes at a time. Off. 30 minutes cut yeah, off. Yeah, I'm min- like, what the hell? I just tried to finish the whole video, got yeah. cut back in. I want to figure out what Rogan uses, because he shoots three-hour podcasts, no problem. I mean, obviously, he's got a producer. Right, I, somebody else is flopping out. So yeah, somebody else is doing the, doing the cuts and stuff, but if I can figure out what he's using, I'll be able to get, get something to make the camera work. At least it's worth it. Yeah, yeah, you can't, you can't complain. It's no. working, it's working so far. I'm super excited to, um, cause this is gonna be episode 26. It'll come out yeah. next next week, but this week I'm gonna put out um, one minute from the first 24 episodes, and right. then I'm gonna talk okay. about it, and then I'll move on to episode 26. It'll be like my episode 25 That'll special. I'm excited lit. about and that. And I'll do some uh, publications for it. So just let me know if you have your logo or whatever you want me to put out there. Yeah, that'd be I'll sweet. Help you promote it too. Yeah, that'd be sweet. Yeah. Well, especially when we put out this one, I'll just I'll just pick out a clip. You know, I always have okay. a yeah. whenever I put it out. You know, I always just do like I, I'll do a minute or forty five seconds on right. Instagram of yeah. whatever the episode is, and we'll sh- we'll get this one out there. I'm super excited to say that the Dream Tour has been on tour. We've been yes, somewhere. You have been out there. I was like, he's serious. He's traveling everywhere. Yeah, I I I, I got some pretty pretty interesting people. Mm-hmm. Lately, as I've seen as that late. Pablo guy from our page. from our from our chat, yeah. yeah. Oh. Pablo, me and Pablo are talking about doing a conspiracy theory show together. He likes that stuff. Yeah, he I loves the, that, he loves yeah. the conspiracies, and we want to do the show together. But we're kind of working on like, do we want to do it over Zoom? Do we want right. to do it in person? Because we're about an hour away from each other, so. Oh, that's good. At least you guys aren't that far. Yeah, so we're we're thinking about how to do that. And um, that guy I had last week was pretty cool. He was in 27 years in prison. He didn't do the crime. That's Boy. crazy. I have one guy for you. I think you would want to do his story, too. He's one of my clients. He got shot in the head twice. Oh, my survived, gosh. Went to jail falsely um, oh. for someone else doing whatever happened. Um, and right now he got signed a $200,000 deal. And he's doing a stimulus package raffle to help people. So what he's doing right now is going on live and stuff and contacting colleges and paying seniors tuitions. That's awesome. Like out of a raffle, he picks 10 who submit it to it, pays them like $20,000 to help towards tuition. And then he's just sending people money just to help during COVID. So That's awesome. It's That's pretty super pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. That That's crazy bad luck, though. You know, crazy. <laughs> get shot oh and then wrongfully committed. I was oh like, my god! Oof. Shot twice in the head. Good lord! It's the people who have been through stuff like that that are the nicest people, though, which is so why. Nice. Oh my 
my it's gosh, so you would wild. think they'd be so bitter. Bitter. And he talks about manifestation too and divine timing. And I'm like, okay, I get it. You need you need to manifest what you want. Right. Um, like I've been saying, I don't know if I've said this on the podcast before, but I've been saying this a lot lately. Is mm-hmm. if you think about like your personality, your mind, your your ego as a rock, right. and your thoughts are water. Mm-hmm. Over time, if you're thinking positive thoughts, if you're thinking about things that are going to happen for you, it be, creates the river in the rock. So, or if you're thinking negatively, it's going to create that negative river in your rock, exactly. and that's the way that the water is going to just naturally flow. And that's how you're going to turn out. Yeah, and if you it, like. It's never too late to try and change your flow. Right. It's just harder the longer you go. The longer you dabble in negativity, the harder it is to start changing quickly that mm-hmm. thought. Oh, I hate myself. And you keep going downhill. But if you train yourself, you could change that negative thought and go that direction. Mm-hmm. But the longer you dabble in something, the harder it is to get out. Like an addiction for people. You read it all? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just read the this book, it's, I haven't, I haven't read too much recently. I read it a lot when I was a, a younger kid, but, um, there's this book, it's called The Happiness Equation. Oh, I think I've heard of that. I, it's like my top recommendation to everyone right now is to check that, to check, check that book out if you're, if you're into reading. The Happiness Equation? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'll like send you a picture of it after this so you can, Definitely. so you can see it. But yeah, it is such a good book and it's just about like, it's r- like, so many people like write these motivational books mm-hmm. about you know be happy do this right. get your mindset this right you this is tangible tangible stuff about being happy and it's not about necessarily being happy it's about kind of figuring out what's what works for you right figuring out your level of mm-hmm. happiness and there's like real studies in there that like really help well, that's good i'll definitely read that book if I suggested anything to you, you should read Siddhartha. Siddhartha? It's about a, a Buddhist guy. Oh, I'm, yeah, okay, I'm in there Traveling already. the river and you're venturing to different sections of your life, I guess. Okay. Kind of, so to speak. That's a good one. And of course, I'd say The Secret, but you probably already I, I haven't read You haven't read that? So yeah, I'm going to have to write these down because I'm getting into reading right the now. Secret. So I'm going to write these down one. before I get out of here. Start with that one. Okay, so the secret and then Siddhartha. All right, so we're getting uh, we're getting just past the hour mark here, so I think we're gonna I think we're gonna cut out. But before we go, we've got a couple more things. Um, so, what's your dream? My dream is to inspire others. Uh, my level of su- of success is that, in a nutshell, I wish to touch other people in their lives and make them believe in what they can actually become and of course my music i don't wish to be famous i just want the money and be in the background living my life with my Ah, family okay that's 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 Mm -hmm. beautiful i like that all right so let's go ahead and um before we check out here go ahead and plug yourself um just you know say your instagram anywhere else you want people to check you out at so i'm bonnie my real name is gabrielle and uh, my instagram is i am bonnie with the three, not an E, so don't get that confused. It'll be in the bio. <laughs> It'll be on the bio. Yes, so you're good to go. Yes, yeah, so just your Instagram there, and then um, you know, if you need to be in articles, if you need. Yes, if you need any articles done, um, major blogs like you need to get on a Hip Hop Weekly, major sources for helping your, I don't know, your credibility and brand authority. Just contact me on Instagram, hit my DM. Uh, my website is also available in my bio. Yeah, so if you want to get yourself out there, want to get your name out there, mm-hmm. this is the girl to talk to. Yes, and, and I am a great mentor, so you need some help, just hit my DM. Mm-hmm. So thank you guys for watching, thank you guys for listening. You know, I always forget to say this, but like and subscribe, yes. follow, do all that. And, um, you know, remember, Keep dreaming. Never stop dreaming. Take a step towards your goal every day. Just one step. It's not that much. Right. You got this. Do something towards your goal. Thanks for watching. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Thank you.